Hello everyone, and thank you for joining me here. My name is Mr. Mocha Lover, and let's continue our new found a Brazilian way of life. Uh, someone last episode asked, what does uh, hue, hue, hue mean? Just, someone explained it to me. That's as much as I'm going to go into that, so you can always look it up on Google yourself. Let's go on right and continue here. Alright, so, we have a whole five stability as the Brazilian nation. Oh, Valonia has joined the Reich's Pact. Uh oh, no, Flanders. Flanders has joined the Reich's Pact. They're led by a shield, Rad van Vlendern, Vlendern, and then Wallonie is Turles. Oh god, that's not good. That is not oh god. That's more stability. That's about six times more stability than what we have. How about you, Flanders? Ooh, about eight times. All right. Pretty much anyone but us will have more stability. The Wallonia Crisis, very nice Stahlhelm you have Alright, uh, let's see. With German and Royalist forces gathered on the Meuse for a swift counterattack, hopes, hopes for the survival of syndicalism in Wallonia fell onto Paris. Well, we'll see if this turns into the Second Great War. Monsters. Oh, armed smugglers captured. Several unsavory individuals were captured today. Oh, what the, what the hell? What the hell? Uh. Trying to smuggle arms from the Rio Grande to Dosul do Argentina. Oh no no no. The guns seem to be of German origin. Oh, and they did fall directly under our lap, however. They're they are uncertain of origin and may be very likely stolen or have already been paid for. What shall we do with a rather large amounts of cargo? Finders keepers. We lose political power, which we could get some more guns. That would be nice since we're at minus sixty six hundred. Or you can't out you can't outrun the law. No, no, no. The law is the law until we change the law through forcible demonstrations, but or a coup. But uh, I like the extra 50 political power just because we are in the whole. I mean, you know, I always usually say you almost always have too much political power by the end game. But this is early game. Political power can mean so much. And uh, since we're only getting 0.18 a day, let's go ahead and. Use the law on our side to crack down on these smugglers. Alright, anyways. Vargas announced as a Republican candidate. Uh, Getulio Vargas's career may have always been heading towards this. From his early positions in Rio Grande do Sul to a successful state presidency in times of turmoil to being a vice president of the most popular head of state in Brazilian history. His rise has been very fast for the traditionally slow climb politics in Brazil entails. It's a really weird sentence. He announced his intention to run for president, or presidente, officially earlier today in Porto Alegre, to a soaring crowd of citizens who wish for the Republic to finally achieve stability and are tired of opportunists attempting, attempting to deceive him. Among his promised goals is a planned industrialization program, better salaries for workers, and bringing Brazil, in quotations, to of the modern age. Well, a popular and safe choice for social conservatives. That's not the path we're gonna go down. Oh no, German Empire got involved. Alright, I'm not doing I am not doing this as an ASMR video. No no no. Not today. And maybe I should stop that accent because I'm not really Brazilian. I, I I doubt that's a Brazilian accent. I just something south of the border. Oh and peas or fies coup d'etat. I'm not reading that word. Fies coup d'etat. Let's let's check out uh that, that guy. Kingdom of Siam. Uh, that's another P word that I'm probably not going to pronounce. Oh, Poland likes a new king. For almost two decades, the Polish throne has remained empty. After the end of the Weltkrieg, a regency council was convened to elect the new Polish king. However, constant interference and aptitude. So basically, they didn't have one for two weeks. Uh, but now, after many weeks of intense debate inside the chambers of the Polish regency council, now who are they going to choose? A good coronation of Frederick. Christian Saski was held in the palace at Warsaw. Uh, that sounds kind of German. Frederick. Oh. Wait. Uh, do we we saw this and you're the the P, the P guy. Yeah. Pra uh, Prajad he people. Alright, and then Poland is a kingdom under uh, born Friedrich Christian von Wetten, King of Saxony. Oh my gosh. Subservient or not, Frederick Christian's coronation does indicate increased presence of German influence. And they went with the Saxon king. 
Okay, so I did this earlier, and they actually went with the Von Habsburg. Well, it looks like Poland might just join that, um, Reichspact. The return of Brest Litovsk. Yep, they're definitely going to do that. If we ever go to war with the Reichspact, then that is who we will fight, but at the moment. Mangaber courts the CGT. The Confederacio General do Trabalho, or CGT, so much easier to read, has gained notoriety in the past decades for the communist threat. Including being a major part, Flanders, I don't care, you're gone at the moment. Uh, a major part of the Mace Strikes earlier this year, perhaps the most well organized and influential leftist organization in the country, it's natural that Zhao Mangabera and his allies in the left front have spared little time in bringing them under the ED umbrella. While many in the CGT have their reservations on working with someone who's clearly less radical than themselves, the idea of peaceful transition to a workers' government has grown in some circles, especially after the violent repression of several strikes recently. The left organizes itself, which they do, even today, very generally, very, very well. So, it'll be very interesting to see what happens in Brazil in the next few months. And we just expanded our state arsenals, just in case other people, as well as a lot, just want to organize and protest against that government of ours. So, right now, it's August 1936, something tells me that we're going to have to choose uh, presidential elections, basically. So at the moment, uh, Brazilian arms, infantry, better military, blah, 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 standardized equipment, military engineering advancements. Ooh, I need to do that. I need to do that. Let's do that. I was thinking about not doing that just because if we're in the Civil War, I don't want to give my out my enemies an advantage. I mean, I'll have the advantage, but then they won't have it. I don't know. Tenantist uprising. Watch. Yet more revolts. Tenants. Have launched a revolt in the barracks in Sao Paulo, or quickly subdued. While the incident barely lasted a day, the affair was covered by the press and shows weakness on the government. A minor inconvenience. Wow. Also, if you may be wondering what tenants mean, it's short for apparently in the lore. It's short for lieutenants, I believe. Left wing lieutenants, I think. Don't quote me on that. Google. You know, I don't even rec recommend using Google. I recommend using DuckDuckGo or something like that. Just saying, but go ahead and look it up. Does America have more stability than me? Oh, see, it w look at that. They're negative 22.4%. I'm not sure how you can actually get that level of stability in real life. But, um, yeah. We have, like, what's a negative to a positive? We, uh, I know it's at least 11 times, but 11 times 0 is still 0. Ooh, and there comes Indo-Chinese Union trying to kill... It's their overlords off. Let's see how this goes. I mean, obviously, I don't really care for them since they're radical socialists. And of course, they would be radical socialists. Radicals only want to overthrow the government. You know, tell me about it. And let's see, alright. Not model colon colonial subjects, that's fine. And Ma Mangabera meets with the FAB leaders. While the meeting of the Democratic Left uh, leader and anarchist federation was mostly fruitless when it comes to formal support, it's clear that the man was made that the man made some influential friends in the section of the left wing. The FOB is, unsurprisingly, for an anarchist organization, very decentralized, and the meeting was mostly on topics of workers' rights and payments rather than formal coalition talks. However, it's safe to assume most leftists in Brazil are indeed under the ED's tent, even if they are not all formally or publicly doing so. Anarchists in a government coalition? As if. Alright, let's keep going. Hmm. Not cold coffee is not too bad, you know? Ah, oh, Brazil, South America will be under you. Oh, alright, well, let's see. The Wallonian Communal Republicans Annex and Flanders is back. Industrial leaders meet with Vargas. Several important industrial leaders have met with Getulio Vargas today in Sao Paulo as he negotiates formal support to his candidacy, claiming only he has only the vision to help them. Considering the options are either radicals, or liberals who would go, who would let them go without any aid. Vargas's words have found ready ears. Difficulty breeds opportunity. Hmm. We shall see how this turns out. And oh, oh, this is important. Union Sindicalista achieves Italian majority. Fifth Congress of Socialist Republic of Italy is ended with Union Union Sindicalista. All right. Well, I mean, I I don't want to say that's a huge surprise, seeing as they already are syndicalist. So I'm not going to save that. All right. Let's see. You're... Oh, yeah. Ugh. I'll go mosey up there being a totalist, totalist man. Coming to France. Of course, they're syndic syndicalists. 
and we are we're fairly social conservative a third of us are social conservative i would argue that about 20 percent of us are hard left people or left-wing people uh let's see social liberals market liberals seven percent national populace is 13 percent that's a little bit less than social democrats but that's pretty good and we're guaranteeing the independence of uruguay what why why i i i, I don't want you to be independent I want you to rely on me. Anyways, major tenants uprising quashed in Rio, Sao Paulo, and several other cities. What seems to have been a coordinated revolt happened. However, the truth is different, and almost every mutineer had a different vision for Brazil and its future, even if most leaned slightly to the left in Rio itself, shaping public opinion on the uprising to be syndicalist in nature. Regardless of their motives, the revolt quickly collapsed upon itself at the lightest of resistance from loyalists, but its impact shows immense fragility in our government at home and abroad, even though... I'm not really sure why abroad. I don't know of any students learning abroad, but whatever. All right, so regrettable. And we have joined America in the Negative Stability Club. Go figure. Good times, right? This is perfect. Negative 6,100 guns. That's okay, right? Let's see. I was going to say something else. I can't remember now. I mean, I've all my. I don't really know where to position my guys, so that's why I just kind of kept them all down here. This is probably a terrible idea to do this. Negative 6%, negative 195. I mean, it could be worse. We could be losing more party popularity. But, uh, and uh, that's what I wanted to say. You know, it's 1936. Everyone, even though people are revolting, everyone across the world is in a Black Monday fallout. I mean, this is a the biggest depression the world's ever seen. Probably even going to be called, like, the Grand Depression, the Great Depression or something. It is terrible right now. It's honestly really, really bad. I mean, so, people can revolt, but everyone's having it bad. I mean, you know, don't don't worry. I'm, I'm all for the workers, guys, but when you're revolting against the government, it was, you know, can't really do very much. What can we do? I don't know, but all I know, what we can do is get another research slot, so that's what we did. It's great stuff. Um, let's see next. Now, the needs of war. The rubber army, 50 more rubber I don't need that <laughs> yeah wait I don't need the rubber army CSN the CSN who is that the Compania Sidarugica Nacional Gunners Majesty of Steel for arms oh, that'd be good steel foreign expertise in great deal of effort chromium mining the oil wells of Lobato oh, that's nice uh, since we're stuck up here pretty much I do want to get unite the army that is definitely one. Lessons of the Civil War. Ah, uh, it's for aircraft. This is for fleets. Reformer fitting, refitting. Yeah, and that's all this other pass that we will never, ever need to go down towards. Let's go ahead and get better radio. Or get ba better standardized equipment. Yeah, that sounds nice. But, since we have another research slot, it is 1936 still. Artillery. Are we producing any artillery? Uh, doesn't look like it. Yeah, we're out. Hmm. Yeah, we're not going to be able to produce any artillery, so that's pretty much null and void. I'm going to not do any land auction just because I don't want my potential enemies who might be in a civil war with me or against me to have a land auction as well. I want them to decide that for themselves. Uh, let's see. Uh, motorized would be... Motorized, it, motorized is a pretty good idea since everyone will need to use it. And if my enemies in the Civil War use motorized, I can use that for myself as well. Since motorized, can't really upgrade it. You know, upgrade it mechanized and stuff like that, so. Mm. Mm. The AIB has funded and organized a festival in Sao Paulo with musicians, speeches, and plenty of free food and drinks. Hell, sign me up. The show, which pretty much celebrates their victory months before the election, had speeches from basically every integralist of note bishops, and even the imperial claimant to the throne in what was an unprecedented act of recent of political history. Journalists called the event, Bread and Circus, and mocked the largely uneducated crowd that gathered, but there's no doubt that the AIB is sure of their victory. <laughs> is that even legal? What? What? What are you talking about? We can host an event, we can talk about our future victory, uh, their, their future victory, you know. And you know what? We're 18% of the vote, versus 13 13? 3? Come on, no one wants syndicalism here in Brazil. Freaking crazies. 
social conservatives, I can see either that I mean, maybe on it one issue, maybe, maybe not. I don't know, we'll see what happens. Vargas takes shot at utopian fools. Getulio Vargas, as he makes speeches throughout the country, use his speech today and please or the hell? No, you're not him. This is it. To denounce what he calls utopian optimism and blame the unrest that plagues Brazil on foolish ideals, Vargas claims that he wants a quick, fast, and painless way up to the troubles of the country, but put the people into sleep with golden promises only to rob them in their sleep of their freedoms and other less friendly analogies. Uh, the frankness and language of the speech captivated the audience, and recordings of it are being transmitted via radio already in some major cities. Is this for the best? And Gustavo Dot Barroso meets with Pedro de Bragnasa. Bra Bra Braganza. Pedro de B. Pedro uh, Gustavo Dot Barroso, a chief integralist figure and an army officer, met today, today with the imperial claimant to the throne of Brazil, Pedro of the House of B. While their meeting was publicly regarded, or re regarded donations to poor neighborhoods and cities near Rio, the fact that is likely there are more they are more likely making plans for an eventual integralist electoral victory. Integralism in Brazil is highly influenced by Portugal, even if being an openly monarchist party is technically illegal. And thus the meeting stirred up much controversy for it is proof for many AIB's true allegiance. Integralist leadership seems to be uniting and preparing in a way until now unprecedented, and only time will tell if these maneuvers will result in anything major. If this isn't monarchism, I don't know what is. Darn tootin' it is. Oh, I love being kind of organic. Alright. Last sip of coffee here, guys, before we get to the next event that I'm going to have a massive speech over. Hmm. And here we go. Mangabera reaffirms a moderate stentus. Jao Mangabera, leader of the Ed, has met with certain unsavory and socialistic people, as the O Global newspaper put it, causing concerns that he is in fact a syndicalist and seeks to destroy democracy in Brazil and raise a workers' republic. No, no, get out of here. We don't want that yet. And seeks to destroy democracy in Brazil and raise a workers' republic in its place. Naturally, it's an exaggeration, but the effect of this red scare was significant enough for Mangabeira to publicly say that he, in fact, is not a syndicalist in any way, and mention that European syndicalism is not an example to be followed, citing the civil war in Italy as a warning to the consequences of extremism. Hmm. His words fall flat on those convinced that he is a spy sent by London to take over Brazil, a rumor already being spread by integralist pamphleteering. Luis Carlos Prestes endorses the ad. Uh, he, a high-profile military officer with known syndicalist tendencies, has publicly announced his support for the Ed movement, as he sees it as the only option that will truly defend the workers from tyranny. This move certainly can do more than harm, or can do more harm than good for the Ed, for Prestes is notorious for his links with the Third International. Terrible, terrible organization. Syndicalists meet meddling in my election? <laughs> and we get a popularity boosted Social Democrats. That's, that's interesting. And time for a quick drink of water. Ooh. So many events, always in the beginning of these episodes. So we have 17% here, 15% for Social Democrat, 30% for Social Conservatives, and here we go. The government idea election tension, year tensions has been removed. What are we going to do, my friends? The day of decision has finally arrived. All pieces are on the table, and the most contentious elections of Brazil's history are about to begin. Polling stations countrywide face never-before-seen lines as pamphlets and criers ask for votes across the nation. Four very different visions for the country clash and ideas. And in some places, like in Sao Paulo, literally as now semi-regular clashes between unions and integralists that dominate the news for the day, at least until the results start to come in. After the death has settled, a victor would and would-be savior of Brazil emerges. Let's see. No... Probably not. Mm. Oh. Gustavo Dodd Barroso and the Asiao Integralista Brasileira. Hmm. I think they have the best chance of winning. See, if we look at look at this. See, if we add these numbers up, so one plus seven is eight is eight. Three plus zero is three. 
we don't believe... Uh, that's also... That's six. That's four. See, if we add these numbers up, obviously we have to choose this one. One plus seven is eight, so obviously that's the highest number, and it's the highest number. It's got to be better, so that way we got to choose the Integralista Brasileira. I'm sorry, but this logic is just perfect. Here we go. All right, I hope we choose the right decision. Casa Grande and Senzala is republished, the masterpiece of modern sociological thought. Casa Grande and Senzala has been republished today. And what some decry as a politically charged move. Regardless, the contents of the book shall remain unchanged. A deep analysis of Brazil's culture, racial, and social history, breaking myths that open that some held for decades. The book not only refutes the supposed inferiority of Brazil due to miscegenation, but also allows how the Brazilian people inherited the best of its many peoples, Indians, Moors, Blacks, and Europeans, that lived side by side and created a Brazilian race that is among the best on this planet. A masterpiece improved. Ah, oh, I can't wait to see what the elections are going to be like, man. This, this has got me kind of, you know, emotional here, man. What's, what's going to happen? Yeah, oh, you know, every time I play Kaiser right now, this, this guy always gets elected. Floyd B. Olson elected as the President of the United States, Dark Horse candidate, uh, from the Progressive Ticket. Uh, he campaigned on drew unprecedented allies from both Democrats and Republicans, seeking alternative to populist and partisan hacks, uh, reinvigorated with the news that his stomach cancer is in remission, uh-oh. He strategy in the White House amidst protests from both socialists and hardliners with the promise of fixing the economy, restoring national brotherhood, and preventing political violence by any means necessary. Good luck with that. It could be 1936, it could be 20, 2018. Good luck with that. Because when you have a circle this colorful, that can only spell doom. Social liberal, huh? National Unity Party. Yeah, that sounds kind of like Macron, to be honest. Oh, I'm a centrist. So, whatever. Social liberalism is a variation on mainstream market liberalism, with the main difference being the inclusion of various civil freedoms as basic human rights. For professing progressive social and economic policies, the social liberals aim to create a society where every individual is free to live his life. Do they just assume someone's gender? Own life with full opportunities regardless of their status. Oh my gosh. I guess we haven't invented transgender people yet. Everyone is male. Elections in Italy. Alright, cool. Cool. Uh, it was a month before that. Oh, we only have negative 1% stability, guys. Good job. Good job. Otavio Mangabera. You might have spent a lot of money on this campaign. Maybe you didn't, but he tells me you ain't going to be there for a while. Okay, computing. Very nice. Oh, even better guns. Uh, reinforce rate. Since we have four research slots, I am confident in doing that. Someone singing in the music. Oh, let's get better fighters. I don't want to out. I don't want to produce any continually crappy fighters. Ah, uh, we have no steel, but we got a lot of rubber. Anybody want more rubber? We're willing to trade Germany. You have rubber stockpiles, and oh, all you have Deutsche Middle Africa. That's true. And here comes another tennis uprising. Watch. Yet another uprising in the barracks. While their demands were similar in nature to the previous ones. This time we've managed to destroy the revolt in a relatively swift and decisive fashion. A minor inconvenience. God dang it, we were just on the cusp of having no stability. Now we have negative three. Alright, so the national focus was completed. At this time, it might be better for me to not get a focus done, just so we get a little bit more political power first. Because I know within the next 56 days, which is the time it takes to complete each focus, we're going to unlock something else. So, Gustavo Duarte Barroso has been sworn in as president of Brazil today. In his speech, he announces the beginning of a new era for Brazil, and that this will be the election that is going to define our country's future. Uh, let's see. Oh, change of national populist party popularity. Hey! Oh! Look at that flag. Look at that. Is that an iron cross? Look at this man. He looks... Is that a butt chin? I'm sorry, man, Gustavo. I didn't know you had an ass for a chin. I'm so sorry. But that's why you're our leader. I want to see if this will fire or not. Ah, there we go. That's what I want to see. The Regency is over. The will of people has been made manifest, and the Republic now has a president that will do what is needed to save Brazil from itself. We just need to go back to an empire. So, with that in mind, I don't know if the Civil War will still fire. And since everything else here seems kind of lackluster at the moment for trying to complete stuff, like getting a radio, logistics company, Brazilian small arms would be okay, but not until 1938, really, when we get the next tech to unlock that. With that in mind, I figure that we might as well just keep going down, we'll just go down this path. Let's see, we get poverty, popularity, 
and political power, propaganda efforts. Oh, army XP. I don't really need that yet. Well, I could use it, but it's not important. Uh, officialized church support. Ah, uh, let's go with the Wu of the Northern Koreanists. They are simple, albeit influential people. We, they can be bought for very little, and their loyalty is very valuable to the aspiring monarch. So let's do that, because we get some political power to get out of this hole that we are currently in. See, look at this. Would you just look at this? 3 plus 7 is 10. Now, I don't know if you knew that, but 3 plus 7 is 10. That's that's a lot of that's a big number. Everything else here, 5, 9, not as good as 10. I think we chose the right number here. And like I called it earlier, uh, well then you have decided to join the Reich's Pact. Yeah, I kind of figured that. That is one fairly large Reich's Pact. Entente, Reich's Pact. Oh yeah, and they have their Asian colonies as well. And meeting with the industrialists. We have recently gained a mandate of the masses to own God's name, but yet the captains of industry of Brazil sadly remain unconvinced of our good intentions rather than their future. Also, I did want to bring this up. We have now 37% of the people's ideology, or at least the voters' ideology. We will arrange a meeting to meet, uh, to explain our goals to them, and to carefully lay out the advantages of siding with His Majesty's Regents, as they have taken to mockingly call the government. The matter is, should we coerce them or negotiate in a more diplomatic manner? So we can take a harsh approach, which will get more power, or we'll take a soft approach, which will get more stability. And at this point, even though I said earlier that stability or political power is extremely important. This is an event where I'm thinking if we take a harsh approach, we might spawn a civil war, and we we might get stability, we might get political power, but we lose even more stability. For this one, we'll lose more political power, but we'll get a little bit more stability, and I don't like seeing a negative number for stability. So let's take a soft approach. That stability honestly probably won't help us a bunch, but we can, like I said, or we get more political power. I don't know. I, I like taking the softer approach. I don't want people to hate us. It's, we're trying to unite the people under one branch, or, you know, under our wing. We want people to like us. We want to convince them. Unlike Floyd Olsen. Yeah, we'll see how you do, boy. You we Long Dong down there, and John Jack Reed up here. I don't think they like you very much. We might just see a little uh, more than a Great Depression. Flood of crisis come out of that country. Ooh, I would not want to be in America right now. Oh, oh, and we did change our name. Integralist Brazil. Oh, yes. That's, what's, Poland, you're still inviting German advisors. Alright, that's cool. Germany, what are you up to? Reichsarbeitdienst. So that's like uh, the German government workers program or something. Oh, Hotchkiss M1914 machine gun. We're using 1914 machine guns in 1937. Alright, well, whatever. Engineering? Uh, no, it's more industry. More industry. Uh, at this point, we might as well go for Disperse, just because construction is so horrendously bad that the next <laughs> civilian factory will be complete in 1939. So, there's no point to even try to speed up that, that construction, really. Let's see what the Kingdom of Ukraine's up to. Oh, uh, look how... You also have an asteroid chin. Alright, well... Requisition Polish. Oh, they were the coalition with the nationalists. Zalda Rada. Prohibit syndicalism, federalization. So they went with. They're gonna repossess Polish farms, which Poles won't like. Recognize Russian. I'm glad they didn't do that. This one. Ooh, that's not good. Resettlement. Hmm. Crisis in the coalition. Succession question. Explosion on the Dnieper. And then they could choose Russia. Germany, uh, oh my gosh. That is not good for them. But, regardless, we must focus on ourselves first. And we're going to continue wooing the northern Coroness. Alright, only six more days. Six more days left. We need to get the wake of war over. Ooh, I want to send, I definitely want to send uh, volunteers to other places. Ooh, extreme dense decentralization, we'll have to fix that. Divided military, we'll have to fix that. And, of course, Black Monday fallout. Let's, let's take a quick look at our focuses. Now, how can we get rid of that? We can get... Oh! Extreme decentralization with one nation. Dealing with chaos. Oh, that's good. Oh, uh, that's not bad. Empire Brazil gets to event the Imperial Coronation. Protect the first Brazilians. Purges. Oh, yeah, I like that. Black Monday Fallout. That's really good to get, too, as well. True, true education. I love... I love... I know education is okay, but I prefer the true education. Youth League, Curb State Powers. That's, that's pretty good. Here. Grants, Christian trade unions, safeguard African culture, criminalize racist offenses. That's right, boys. We're all not racist here. More stability, hero cults, 
Infrastructure, population. Uh, Imperial Dragoon, that's cool. Organic Empire. Oh, yes. Burdens we bear, a Togo. Alright, cool. Uh, Imperial Splendor. Oh, yeah, that's a lot. Cancel guarantees independence to the Brazilian demands. Rescue the Mind Poche of people. Oh, so, that's pretty cool. So, with that in mind, what we're gonna do, everything up here, I don't know, I think the Federal Army, because I wanted to go that down that path eventually, because I've already looked at this focus part of the focus tree, and it's okay. And join staff, we gotta get a bonus to land auction, big deal. You lose 40 experience there. Join exercises is okay. This is okay as well, uh, with more organization and planning speed. But. Federal Army, you get removed the spirit of the divided military, which is good, which you can't get with the other side. Army experience is okay, land auction is okay, more war support is not bad. So, with that in mind, we are going to continue trying to increase our popularity here with officialized church support for more political power and national populist support. Clergy now stands fully behind us in our efforts to make the nations everything that it is supposed to be. The new Brazil, with the blessing of Our Lady, will be one nation under God. So, with that in mind, we have chosen our focus, we have chosen our leader, and we are now in the minds and hearts of 47% of our people's, or at least voters, situations. And by voters, I mean if you look to the left of this, there's no election, so totally everyone's happy with this. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. We will leave this episode here today. Please leave a comment below. Please laugh like a Brazilian every single day. Subscribe if you're new here, and I will see you tomorrow with our leader who has an ass fortune. Thank you very much for watching.